Hey podcast peeps, I'm Sister Keela and you are tuned into The Door. We're talking all things healing, beautiful, and light, and that means you. So get ready to be inspired, walk through the door, and remember who and what you are. Hello my dear brothers and my dear sisters. It's so good to be with you today. I'm your host, Sister Keela, and it's so good to be with you. Today I want to talk about, well, I don't actually want to talk about anything. I want to bring you words of comfort um, from the Buddha during the time of Savats when he was uh, living in a monastery, and it's a sutra about the better way to live alone. Uh, sometimes in this journey, we get frazzled or overwhelmed. And sometimes we're like, you know, why do I feel this way? Uh, why are you disquieted, oh my soul? And then the Buddha Sutra on the better way to live alone, he really points to breakthrough. He really points to peace. And I find that when I meditate on this sutra, all is well with the world again. And what I love about God, what I love about comfort of Holy Spirit is the answers are always so simple. And by simple, I mean uncomplicated. So the better way to live alone uh, says this, the outline for that talk or sermon is don't pursue the past or lose yourself in the future. Dwell in mindfulness night and day. The one who's able to dwell in mindfulness is the one who knows the better way to live alone. So the disciples of the Buddha asked, well, what does it mean to pursue the past? And the Buddha answered, the one who considers the way her body was the one who considers the way her feelings were, the one who considers the way her perceptions were, the one who considers her previous mental formations, and the one who considers the way her consciousness was and is burdened or attached to those things is pursuing the past. You know, sometimes we get depressed or we get stuck because even though you're ever expanding, even though I'm ever expanding, dear friends, we hold on to our old self. Rebirth is taking place. Regeneration is taking place. Transcending, transformation is taking place. Even as the universe is expanding, you are expanding and part of our job is to keep up with ourselves, <laughs> to keep up with our higher self, to keep up with God within us, right? <clears throat> but sometimes we're attached mentally. We have a grip on the way we used to be and we're burdened by either because we no longer in that state or we were in that state, but in, in either condition, uh, we are either burdened by it or we're attached to it, and then we're pursuing the past. So the person who is not pursuing the past, he can consider the way his body was. He can consider his old feelings. He can consider his former perceptions. 
He can't consider his formal mental formations. He can't consider his former consciousness. But his mind's not enslaved by and he's not attached to those things. That person is not pursuing the past. The person who's dwelling in mindfulness night and day, being present wherever present is, being mindful, and the way we do that, you'll recall, is we just go back to our breathing. We go back to our breathing. We're home in our body. We recognize all is well. We get back in tune with our higher self. You can go back to the podcast on making space, uh, creating room and making space. And we let the past dissolve. We let it disappear. And that's a discipline. That's a practice. The Buddha says practitioners of this way live in freedom and stability. Can you imagine being free to just be right now? I'm so free right now because I'm talking to you. I'm sending my love, my deep love to you. I'm not worried about what I'll be doing after this. And the day the conversations, the occurrences before this encounter I'm having with you are no more. I'm just here. My feet are on the floor. I feel the love streaming from my belly up through my voice box, out of my mouth, and into the uh, microphone. And I'm truly home. I have all that I need. That takes practice. But with practice comes freedom and stability. The Christ said to build your house on solid ground, not on sand. That way when the winds come and the rains come down, the house can stand. That's stability. And the Buddha speaks of this too. He says the one who's not swept away by the present notes the teachings of the noble ones, studies the teachings of the noble ones, the teachings of love and understanding and is aware of the community that practices harmony and awareness. So the way to not be swept away is to go and look at the teachings of the enlightened ones. What's life-giving for you? What are the teachings of love and understanding that you indulge in, that you partake in? Cling to those. Regardless of what your faith is, who your guru is, mine is Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, the consciousness I aim to be in alignment with the mindfulness I pursue as the mind of Christ and the Christ consciousness, whatever that is, you know who your teachers are. 
those of love and light and understanding, they're, they're enlightened. Go back to those. Nourish yourself. Eat them like leafy greens. I mean, just really mm, delve in. Nourish your soul. I tell you often, my dear friends, you are so worthy of love and you are deeply loved. Nourish yourself. Love your shell, yourself by eating, digesting the teachings of those that source God has sent to you. They've given um, of what has been downloaded to them. Freely they've received, freely they've given to you. So and I want to encourage you, don't deprive yourself. So the second part of the first part of the outline that says don't pursue the past or lose yourself in the future, the Buddha's disciples said, well, what's an example of losing yourself in the future? And the Buddha responded, the one who considers the way their body will be, what their future feelings will be, their future perceptions, their mental formations or consciousness. And when they consider these things, they're burdened and daydreaming about them. Those folks are losing themselves in the future. There's something to be said for positive thinking, for creative workshops, which I'm a huge proponent of, for um, looking at where you want to go. Um, but it's another thing to become obsessed or to daydream to the point where you're not here. In that instant, if you're swept away and you're somewhere else, you're not being present. But when you're here right now, when you're home, you're free and you're stable. There is a third caution for the better way to live alone. And that's to not be swept away by the present. So the Buddha cautions, don't pursue the past. Don't lose yourself in the future. Notice he doesn't say, don't think on the future. Don't have faith or hope for the future. Don't anticipate a delicious future for yourself. All that is wonderful. The Bible says, um, I come to give you a future and a hope. Christ consciousness, the, the Christ um, had the words of a future and a hope for you. But the Buddha cautions, don't lose yourself in the future. Now, to be swept away in the present means that you don't recognize or know the teachings of the noble ones who teach love and understanding. When I picture being swept away, I picture me going about life in a woodland area, walking about and I'm hunting and gathering, or I'm picking up pine cones, or I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Perhaps I'm starting to build a fire. And then I hear a rumbling, 
the sound of like a flash flood and a river rushing through the woodland and sweeping me away, swept away. And I'm what? Carried away, right? Could be injured, definitely beat up rocks and trees and being dragged and can even drown. When I think of drowning, I'm thinking of being overwhelmed. But the teachings, in some cases, your roots. In my case, the teachings of Christ, the teachings of Buddha, very complementary to each other. I see no competition uh, with my, my guru's teaching and my practice of Zen Buddhism. No conflict. They're quite, quite complementary. Um, going to those teachings, when that river comes, that's what keeps me from being swept away. So honor your teachers. And if you don't have teacher, ask God and see where he pulls you. Say, God, I need a manual. I need instruction. I need guidance. Show me the teachings of love and understanding. And I promise you, friend, the universe will deliver said teachings to you on a platter. Your father knows how to give good gifts to his children and you're his child, you're deeply loved. So if you ask for the teachings of love and understanding, he's not gonna give you a stone or a snake or something you don't need. He's gonna deliver to you exactly what you've asked for. And so the one who is also swept away by the present says, I am this body. I am these feelings. I am this perception. I am this mental formation. I am this consciousness. But the one who's not being swept away recognizes, I am not this body. You have a body, but you are not your body. We've talked so many times before about how this is your earth suit. You are spirit. And your body is an agent to navigate this earth realm, but you are not your body. And for some of you who don't particularly appreciate the way your physical body is as it stands now, that can be a relief for you. You are not your feelings. Your feelings are just feelings. But you, God in you, you, you who are one with God, you have the ability and the power to set your emotional set point. You can change your feelings. Not by forcing. You feel what you feel. You allow, but then you let go. You are so sturdy. You are so solid. You are so free. You are not your feelings. You are not your perception. You are not your mental formation. You are not your consciousness. For me, when I recognize the ego, I don't beat up Kila. 
I know I'm Christ consciousness. I know I'm letting this mind be in me, which was in the Christ. And so I don't beat myself up. I just say, oh, that's the ego. But I'm not my consciousness. And so guess what? When you recognize you're not those things, you don't have to be swept away. And furthermore, you can love yourself. You can be gentle with yourself. The Buddha here is giving you permission, dear friend, to not even judge yourself. Everything doesn't have to be placed in a good, bad, right, wrong, evil, righteous pile. If you, dear friend, can practice what God practices towards you, which is unconditional love and allowing you to just be, go back to our episode about do nothing, (laughs) just be, then you're winning. Remember, salvation is safety. Being free of judgment from God, which that's the reality. And from yourself, if you could stop judging yourself. You won't be swept away either. So now, how do you come to the place of being present? As I was sharing, if you want to run that back and sit down with your eyes closed and consider each of the points the Buddha talked of, the way the body was or will be, the way the feelings were or will be, the perceptions, the mental formations, the consciousness. If as you hear the list, if you can let go of each, whatever you find the mind, not your mind, because you are not these perceptions, these feelings, this mental formation, If you can let go of past and future parameters, in letting go, you find that you're left sitting with yourself. And then you can turn to your breathing. And breathing out, you know that you are breathing out. Breathing in, you know that you are breathing in. Out. In. Out. In. Breathing out, you are aware you are breathing out. Breathing in, you are aware you are breathing in. You are practicing the way of freedom. You, beloved of God, are moving in stability.
You have need of nothing in this holy instant. And you are truly home. You are love. Love created you loving. Peace created you peaceful. Help created you helpful. And kindness created you kind. You're already blessed as you contemplate this sutra with me on the better way to live alone. I am happy, I am free, I am peaceful, I'm free. I am happy, I am free, I know God's will for me. You are happy, you are free, you are peaceful, you're free. You are happy, you are free, you know God's will indeed. And God's will for you, my dear brother and my dear sister, is salvation. Awareness of the reality that you are safe. You are free and you are stable. You are deeply loved. And we are one. All right, podcast peeps, my dear brother and my dear sister. This concludes this week's episode of The Door. You can check out new episodes every Sunday. And if you find the show to be of value to you, then you can show your support by listening and sharing with your friends and family. You can lend your voice to the show by leaving a voicemail with your questions, aha moments, or any insights you'd like to share. And if you'd like to be on the show, then leave a voicemail with your contact info and the topic you would like to cover under the umbrella of love, light, and healing. Let's you and I have an expansive conversation for the benefit of the listening audience. If you'd like to support monetarily, that is most welcome. Simply click on the link in the show description and you can pledge monthly for 99 cents, 4.99 or 9.99. Thank you in advance. Hey, I have had so much fun and I truly appreciate you guys. I want to remind you that you are deeply loved and we are one.